So welcome to class, what is this, three, uh, three of uh, acrylic basics. Um, for the last two classes, we have worked with very simple subjects so that the focus is on brushwork and color mixing, which I think is one of those. So the first week we did an apple where we worked with red, a red apple where we worked with green, right? The complement as the shadow. The second, and we really worked on soft edges. In the second week, we worked on an orange from Diana's garden there in LA. Um, so we worked with blue and how to mix shadows with blue. And here's where things get kind of, and now we're going to be working with lemons. So that we're working with the last mm -hmm. complementary color pair today, the lemons, right? So what's the complement to yellow? Does anybody remember? Is it purple? Oh, it's purple. Mm -hmm. Right. So notice how subtle these shadows are. We are going to be mixing yellow and purple. One of the things I want you to notice is that, um, and by the way, I've sent this across the thread. Julia, are you on this thread? Um, I am. Okay. So I yeah. sent this across the thread. This is a slightly duller version, <laughs> just how my printer printed it out. So if you're looking for a little bit more vibrancy, the actual source is on the thread. Uh, if you're watching the video, the editor will put this up probably now. Cue Holly to put up the <laughs> picture of the, the picture that's in WhatsApp. Um, but this will kind of show us where the lights and darks are. So one of the things you find, I think one of the frustrations people have as they're mixing colors and struggling is that you're basically mixing a primary color, right? Red, yellow, or blue with a tertiary color or a secondary color, which is a mix of two of the primaries. Yeah. So if you don't get the balance of your primary right, your shadows are often, your, your color mixing is going to look too green, too red, you know, it's going to be too much of one color. So we're going to really practice that. And, and the most challenging, I'd say, is yellow, just because it's easily influenced, right? And you're going to have to mix a good purple. Uh, and so we're going to talk about how to do that. And in fact, let's start with the sketch. We'll start with the sketch, which is fairly simple. Uh, we've been working with single objects. I thought now was the time to sketch in. Right. So I'm going to start. I'm going to sketch in this guy. I'm going to sketch in this guy. It's so pretty, Diane. This is also from Diana's garden. You get a bumper crop of lemons every year. Here we go. Yeah, it's nice. It's there. nice this time of year. I have all these different citrus fruits. Or you can just go like this, doesn't really matter. You can just go like this or like this. So um, let us see. Start. But it's nice for the composition to get the edges mm -hmm. of the cutting border. It is. It is. Yes. Yes. So if you're wanting to kind of create, I'm kind of more in the, uh, I'm just going to do the, in the lemon. Too, right? But, yeah. Like, but yeah. And, and these are simple objects. It's funny. Last year for this, um, and I'm just, hang on, I'm like putting on some lights. Last year at this time, I had everybody paint spheres and it made everybody nuts because <laughs> spheres are like kind of not very satisfying. As you know, it's kind of hard to do the blending. And, uh, and so this year you're not painting spheres, but you're painting very sphere-like objects. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, where is the light coming from? Can you tell? From the right? Yeah, mostly from the right. Mm. Particularly with this lemon, we can see those transitions here. It's kind of lighter, kind of. I'm kind of sketching in the light, the medium, and the dark. Oh, and then down here, it's a little bit more. So these are all the light, medium, and darks. So as we're starting to sketch, just look. You know, I'm going to start by I. You always start with the piece that's in the front, 
The lemon that these are two different lemons, Diana tells me. One is, I don't know, can you tell us any more about these lemons? Actually, the one with more color, the one in the front, uh -huh. is a lime. It's a lot really? Yeah. All right, we won't tell anyone. It looks like a well, lime. It's you know, when they when they ripen on the tree for too long, or not too long. I mean, I like them when they get a little bit less tart. Uh, they they turn yellow and they sweeten a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we start with what's in front, so that we can use that to define what's in the back. I'm just coming over here. I can see that basically, if I measure, can you see why I'm measuring using my pencil the width of this lime lemon, and I line it up with the edge of the lemon as it hits the line it's really what the width is really two times the line so i can come over here and line that up and mark that so i kind of know where my lemon in the back there starts so now see i have this like little measurement i can see it doesn't start towards the middle of the line it actually moves towards the left and it's a little bit square on top. Now I have to step over it to make sure you see. I know where to stop because I've marked it already. So we always draw the thing in front first because that helps us define how the because they're connected to each other right in a way they're like one big super object i've often asked people what is their instinct and then of course you can add in your stem look at the relationship of how this stem hits both this object and this object as well with the leaf how close that's closer. Okay, just also observing that I just made four mistakes in front, right in front of you. Did you notice? I'm like, make the mistakes. I tell this because I want people to get that making mistakes is an absolutely necessary part of the process. And if you don't make mistakes, you'll never get anywhere. In this is so true of making art, and I realize that like I make them, and you don't even see like most students. I I correct so fast that most people don't even see it. So I've made this point of going, okay, I corrected it. Now, just to show you how clearly I'm I'm paying attention, I was really looking at how this leaf relates to this up here. So originally, my instinct was to kind of push it farther out. But then when I looked and saw, oh, wow, this is almost touching the lemon, it helps me shape. So once you get these two shapes in, it actually helps you uh, get the other shapes, right? With this being the kind of anchor. That's a lot of like important drawing truths there. And then um, I'm trying to decide, do I want to add like the table in and curb it? Maybe I do. Maybe I, yeah, maybe. Right, I could do that if I wanted to. Um, or I could just make it straight and I can also decide that later. Oh yes, and then I want to, this is the blick. This is the light part of this lemon. This this is the medium part of this lemon, and here's the dark edge. Because this light, uh, lime is in front of this lemon, there's a, it's cast, and the light's coming from this direction, it's casting a shadow. It's funny, there's actually, the shadow is actually going under this direction. But Diana, did you like put a light on it or something? Uh, I did. I have, uh, I have uh, light in the ceiling, and I have light 
going to the front of them. To the front on this side. Yeah. Yeah, so it's coming from two sources. It's actually not as clear. So the the ceiling light is what creates the shadow in the front. Yeah, the that creates the shadow. The shadow. Right. Yeah. And then it comes it comes from the top straight over them as well. Right. There's a complex sep second shadow going on. Yeah, I know. But uh, no, no worries. I mean, just, you know. But it gives it also, it's nice when it's more than one shadow. I agree. Everything is uh, already more than one shadow. Hmm. Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Sandra. How you doing? We oh. thought you had abandoned us. No, I went hiking, but I woke up a bit late, so. Good. Right, hang on, guys. I'm going to take a picture of this. I'm using the thread. I'm using my phone, so it's a little hard to um, photograph things, but I'm going to do, send a few photographs across because I think they're neat. And Julia, you didn't. Here's my drawing. Sorry, on it. I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to let you guys turn your phones to see it. And here is the sketch. This is probably the last thing I'm going to send over. All right, now let me pop back on here. Yeah. You've got it. Ah, don't fight me. There we go. Uh, so we were just discussing, Julia, the assignment for the next two weeks, because I'm going to be out of town for like 10 days, which is two of the, from February 1st to the 11th, is you're going to set up your own still life and paint it. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I like that you find that exciting. That's good. It is, I think it'll be fun. Um, and, you know, you can review. We have the other lessons. There we go. We, the other lessons uh, have been recorded, the apple and the orange, uh, mm -hmm. twice, actually. So you can watch them and, you know, do them. I was going to advise people to particularly beginner. Louise is a beginner, right? So I was going to advise you to stick with you know, what we've done, like creating an apple, lemon, orange, still life. Uh, and I want you to take two sessions to paint it. So make at least three objects, different ones. Um, you can set it up yourself. You can look for a picture that you like. Uh, Diana might provide some stuff if you want to from her garden. But the idea is that you're going to work on all the concepts Diana will be here to help and I can watch on the thread and when I have time, I will pop in. So when you two are done, go ahead and just send across the thread. I'm gonna get myself a cup.
<laughs> nope, she's still feeding the cats. Did you hear that you liked about cats? Huh? Yes, Julia. Is Julia in? Because Sunny's out? No, Sunny's here. Oh, you did not kick her. She heard someone say cat and she came running. No. Oh. Thinking, is Julia here? So Julia tolerates Sunny, I presume, or kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, I sent these. Sorry, I sent them sideways. I wonder if I can fix that here. Can I rotate you? You gonna want me? No. Ah. Whatever. Okay. Oh. There we go. It's also true that my camera is kind of going on this screen. So probably gonna get a new one at some point. But if you know, it takes so long to pay the phone off. <laughs> By the time you pay the phone off, like it's- Obsolete. Buy a new one. I know, it's like, what the heck? This is, this is a dumb way of organizing things. <laughs> Here we are. Let's see. Louise, that looks pretty good to me. Get your shadow on this one too, the bottom one. Oh, yes. Yep. It's a little hard to see. I know I covered it up with my marks. Um, very nice. Okay. Sandra, did you go on a hike today? Oh, is she not there yet? She did. She has, She said when she came that she did. Oh, really? I missed it. She had that nice, fresh, ruddy cheek look of somebody who's been exercising. So nice. Okay. Julia, how are you feeling? You ready to start talking about color mixing? While yeah. you're yeah. drawing, yeah. or do you want to? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to send you where I'm at. I'll do that and then, I'll, and then we'll get on that. I like it. <laughs> They're so cute, the, this lemon and this lime. Good. They get sweeter, uh, a little bit sweeter. Uh, yeah, they do. They turn yellow, the limes. Nice. Yeah. More lemony. Well, they never talk taste like lemons but what an incredible abundance planet we have all these different varieties of things yeah and i'm so proud i have them because i planted every tree myself when they were tiny tiny babies they're all your babies all grown up yeah they are they are Mine is a lot lighter than everybody's. I'm wondering if I should have done it a lot darker. It's okay. Um, it's okay. You can start with light. That's good. Yeah. You. I only do mine dark because you need to. No, that's beautiful. Good. It looks. It looks like your lemon just for structural purposes. It looks like your lemon's a little tall. Can you see that? It's a little bit fatter. Oh, I see. That's the shadow. The shadow. 
Yeah, it's the same height as the one in front. Great. You guys got it. Okay. So let me pop back up here. All right. So let's talk about color mixing. So uh, the first colors I'm going to recommend you have, I'll be able to see this. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, well, let's do this. Once again, as an organizational tool with painting, I'm going to put some cadmium yellow light, which is my cooler yellow. And notice that and cadmium yellow medium, which is my warmer yellow. Can you guys see the difference? I think even here we can see the difference. One's a little orangier, one's a little. Mm. And notice I'm putting these towards the top of the page. Doing that is that when I think I'm going to be doing a lot of back and forth. So I'm going to down so we can see it. Don't be difficult. There we go. Um, so. So if I just throw these paints in the middle and start mixing outward, I run out of space really fast and I run out of paint really fast. So I like to always organize my paints um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a line here um, at the top. And you'll see, I'll sort of demonstrate for you how I like to mix. I'm putting down a little bit of ultramarine blue, which is a warmish blue. If you don't have that, tell me what you've got and we'll talk about it. And then instead of cadmium red, which I've used in the last assignment, I'm going to use a cooler red. I might put both down just so you can see them. So once again, these are the primaries, right? These are the three colors upon which everything is made and mixed. Here's my red. You know, it's been so long since I used these acrylics that they, they are not coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, here, let me show you what I often do. Like, when mine are really old, I cut the bottoms or the tops off and I just squeeze from there. It's, it's kind of a... All right, here's a look at the difference between these. So this is a quinacridone red. Mm -hmm. This is a cadmium red. Cadmium red is almost orange. It's orange, yeah. It's orange. It's like practically orange. It's not exactly orange, but it's practically orange. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix the purple. If I mix the purple, and I'm just going to do with a little paint. Oh, here, hold on. Let me get it. Let me get water. I've got a little container for water here, right there, so you can kind of see it. And then I, I, I very often mix with my brush. You could also use a palette knife. The thing about acrylic is it dries pretty fast. So by the time you've kind of fiddled around, um, so I'm just going to take this little brush. This is generally not a brush I paint with. It's too small, but it's good for mixing. So I'm going to mix a purple. So here, let me show you. If I mix, so notice I'm coming in between and taking all the paint off the brush, sort of squeezing it around. I, what you didn't see is that I just wiped the brush off on my pant leg, a very bad habit. So here, here's the better habit. Take your blankie, squeeze it. So I'm going to take a little bit of this red down here, right? And then... I'm going to take a touch of blue. And when I, you can do this too if you want to with the warm red. You're going to see that what I'm getting is not exactly purple. It's kind of more maroony, almost a little brown. Why is that? I thought red and blue, you know, I thought they, I thought they made purple. Why is that? Yeah, let's see if we can see it. I'll turn on the light here and see. Nope, that doesn't help at all. Okay. Um, I'll take a picture in a minute. But why does this look kind of brown and murky? Anybody have an idea? Is it to do with the um, just the shades or the tones? Like how much uh, white is in them? 
Uh, nope, it's not that. But Julia, you came close when you declared at the beginning, when I first put these tubes out, you said, that's not red, it's orange. Right? So what happens when we mix comp blue and orange are complementary colors? What happens oh, when we cool. mix together? They make a neutralized version of each other. Now, this is not a terrible thing. It's not a terrible color. And once I do the finished mixing, I'll send a picture over that's more clear so you guys can see it. But it's not the purple that's necessarily going to help you, you know, win awards and I don't know, <laughs> do that whole thing. So when I mix purples, I my go-to is often a cooler red, this pinky red here, if you come over here and look. You'll see and see how my organization is working. Now I can just pull. Did you say that was quin quinacridone? Quinacridone red. red. It could also be permanent red. It could also be permanent rose. They're similar. I've got a quinacridone magenta and I've got an alizarin. Uh, you don't want magenta. Magenta is really an entirely different animal. What else, what else do you have? I've got an alizarin crimson hue. Um, and Yes, something called crimson I've or got, I've got some like real crap old stuff in it. Um <laughs> some crimson rouge, whatever that is. Maybe crimson rouge. You can send me a picture of it and I can tell you for sure. Um here I'm gonna take a picture of this. So I'm gonna remove my phone so you can really see how these the difference between these two. Yeah. See how one is just kind of almost brown. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that like that's not, and maybe actually this purple might work better when you're mixing with yellow. But, and notice also how easy it is for your purple to get to pink. See that? If you use too much red, you don't have enough blue, it becomes less purple and more kind of reddish which will create problems later on. So this is the challenge of mixing. Really, almost all colors kind of come from different variations of the complements. Yeah, that'll work, Julia. That's a good one. Yep. Kind of a, so see the difference. Let's see, sorry, I'm gonna take a picture of this while I've got the phone off and just send it over to you guys so you can see the difference between same blue. All right. Now, I only have carmine red, and I can tell that's also more orangey, I think. You don't have any cool reds? No. <laughs> What's the cooler one? What's the coolest one? I, I only have carmine red. That's the only oh, red. You're going to work with that, but you'll notice yep. you'll, you'll struggle. It's okay. You're just going to do the best you can with what you've got. Yeah. And then you'll get more colors, yeah. right? Particularly when you go and you get your canvas. Yes. You get your canvas, you're getting your canvas to paint on, your canvas boards. Louise asked me earlier, like, what canvas paper I preferred. And I said, I, I hate canvas paper. I never use it. I find it. Particularly for acrylic painting, it's just not, acrylic is meant to be done on fabric, you know, it's a fabric thing. So. You mean, um, Leah, the uh, acrylic paper, you mean the kind that comes in pads? Yeah, the canvas paper, like, it's just like, ugh, I just don't like it. Oh, okay. I think it's, I, it, it, to me, it feels like they're trying to do something with what, you know, it, that's like a, something that doesn't translate from watercolor, right? When you work with watercolor, you work with papers, heavy papers, but why paint on, why paint on canvas paper? But it's also really a preference. I mean, I'm an, I'm an acrylic and oil painter. I love that. That's what I do, right? And that is um, the, and you know, for me, it's the, the fabric. It's the fabric that makes me feel, the cloth that makes me feel like I'm painting. Um, the next step of this, right, is that we're going to be trying to recreate these shadow colors. And the trick here is that lem uh, uh, yellow is a very light, 
right, color. So if I glop a whole bunch of this on, it's not gonna look right. So I'm gonna take tiny little, that's probably even too much right there. I'm gonna scrape off some, scrape off more. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna blend in color so I can mix a shadow. Not sure how I feel about that. Maybe more yellow. And I'm going to, there we go. You'll see, it doesn't take very much to create a kind of grayed yellow. So that I'm, yellow that you've got there, is that a blend of the two other ones? Nope, it's just no. the one. I'm gonna test both. I think we would test both, right? So I'm this gonna is try, this is cadmium. This is cadmium yellow. So I'm trying it with the cooler purple. And then just for curiosity's sake, I'm gonna throw in this kind of muddy purple and see. Yeah, the muddy purple is way too ground brown and way too green. In fact, both of them are a little bit green, right? So the reason is that there's a little too much blue in my purple mix. And I didn't find that out, of course, right until I mixed it. There's a little too much blue because the blue is mixing with the yellow and making something that looks more green than shadowy yellow. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit more red in. Oh, that might've been too much. Hence the color of mixing, the value of mixing. So I'm throwing in some more yellow. Yeah, and that creates a shadow that I kind of like a little bit more. So do you see how I did that? So if you find when you're mixing that your comp, that your comp, that your shadow version is looking not like a shadowed yellow or a shadowed orange or a shadowed red or a shadowed green, it's looking kind of like a little bit more colorful and kind of dull, right? A kind of dull color. That means you've got too much of the color that you can see. So if my shadow looks too green, it's because there's too much blue in it and that means uh, blue in my, my original mix. And I need to get a little bit more red in there to adjust that. So that's the, that's the mixing thing. And just out of curiosity, I'm gonna try and pull in a little red here. So here I have my two samples. I'll send you pictures of all of this. Oh, that was way too much red. Notice how easy it is to get too much red in. Oh, ah, no, that's too dark. Now, let's see. I'm gonna do the same. There we go. Huh, interesting. Yeah, not quite the same, but uh, interesting. I'm gonna do the same thing with my cool yellow to see what happens. I wanna see, right? I'm not quite sure which one is gonna be the best. Here, I'm gonna scoot this a little bit. This way. Watch the whole demo, just cause there's a lot going on here. There's a lot more. So the key is there's a lot more yellow than there is purple in the mix. When I look at this, this also seems, well, it's okay. It seems a little bit greenish. So I'm gonna grab a little red. Yeah, the cool yellow makes a different, definitely makes a different shadow of nuance on that shadow color. So see, as I have my paints organized up here, I can totally organize the piles. I can still pull from the original pile. I'm gonna pull a little bit of this and see what happens. Uh, that's definitely too blue, almost green. So I'm gonna grab in a little red, not too much because my experience over there, yep, too green. So now I'm gonna mix the green in very often. I need a little bit more yellow. Right. So as I'm mixing, I definitely think this purple is the better purple. And I really love this shadow color. To me, that feels a lot like what's happening. So that's the kind of challenge of mixing is that you're constantly having to adjust your mix. I'm going to take a picture of this so you can really see it. And I'd like to see you guys practice that before we start, you know, working on the painting. Oops. 
the WhatsApp. Yeah, group. I might leave your guy, you guys, because my my paint from three days ago is dry. Finally, I feel like putting up more. Also, you've been working for an hour already, and I know you're busy. Yeah, but I'm gonna send you where I'm at. So Louise, tell me what I'm looking at. Mm, so the top right is the purple, okay. technically. And then the bottom bottom yellow is the one that's been mixed, uh, the cadmium yellow mixed with the purple. Okay. Hold on. And I only have one yellow. So I'm trying right now to mix that with a white to get a lighter yellow as well. Don't do that. The white will not help you. The white okay. won't help. Okay. Right. It's it, it's literally going to dull whatever color you put on there. The white is used in only very special circumstances. And uh, it will not make your colors brighter or it won't change them. You need to use more yellow and less, right? Smaller doses mm -hmm. of this. That's why I'm like, what's going on there? Um, but so use more yellow and le and less of your your shadow mix. That's how you modulate that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, to get the, the lighter cadmium yellow that you have, isn't, you don't put white in that? Or? No, you do not. Okay. You absolutely do not put white in that. Hear me when I say this, no white. No white is on this. Everything that's here comes straight from, these are tubes. These are primary colors and I'm mixing everything from what's here. There's no white here. Yes, and I need to, white uh, will not make your painting look better. It yeah. will often make your painting flatter and duller. And because it cools things down. There's a white's a tricky subject. So just know that in gouache, maybe, yeah. They use a lot of white. Um, I mean, of this course, this is how you lighten colors in gouache. Well, water. Yeah, white is used in gouache, of course. White white is used in all painting, but <laughs> pointing out that right here in this mixing, in this basic mixing, white's not gonna help you. So uh, use a little bit, so try again, use a little bit more uh, yellow, a little bit, you know, adjust your shadow, your shadow color. Yeah. You're, you're not, um, we will use white, but not now. No, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, so I sent you where I'm at. I, as you can see, I'm, uh, shrinking the eyes of the guy so i've only shrunk one oh, that's fantastic diana i've only shrunk one yet yeah 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 with that hooded lid which is the real identifier of him yeah kind of hooded lids absolutely oh that's great thank you that's fantastic oh yeah you got it you're so close do you think the background works yeah i like it I mean, right. you could, if you wanted to, neutralize it just a little bit more. Yeah. Now, Louise, here's a place where white can help. Uh, add a kind of uh, titanium white in and kind of lighten it a little bit or gray it a little bit if you wanted to. But I, it doesn't bother me at all. So as long as she... But I never it. use white as white. I always yeah. make it with other colors. Mix it with other, I mean, mix it with, a. yeah, you're not going to put white on top. E but you're even gonna... though several things in this picture originally are white, as you classify white. Yes. It's either yellow or blue or purple in it. Yeah, you guys look at this. Yeah. Look at this and you'll see how little white is actually used. Yeah. It's an in a in a sort of ending point, it can be kind of a bright highlight if you use correctly. But if you use it to mix with something else, you're just gonna flatten your color, whatever it is. Yeah. And I I so never use I never use, use white white for highlights either, but that's cool. yeah, you usually put little lemon or yeah. blue or, or a turquoise or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um you might, Diana, wanna like mix a little bit of white in with that blue if you wanna push that back a little bit. Yeah, I, I that might do that. I might or I might put a little bit. Gross. Yeah, I might do that. And Thanks. um, yeah, okay, we'll talk about it more later. Okay. But, Take care. Diana. I sent you a message. You never look at your messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sandra, I heard that you went on a hike, but I didn't hear where. 
I always, I go every morning now. Uh, it's a nearby, nearby park and it's very hilly and it's fantastic um, fitness. At long last, I'm, I'm getting fit. At long last. We were discussing, yeah, because Diana was like, where's Sandra this morning? I'm like, oh, she has a new routine. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, and I can feel the benefits already. So, uh, oh, good. Uh, all right, you are like glowing with like health and health. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's a like, fresh Absolutely place. fabulous to see. Um, absolutely fabulous. Not to put you on the spot, I'm just noticing. Yeah. And I've been running even. I'm so happy. Yay. That makes me because because getting the blood flowing like makes your life better. Oh, uh, I needed it so badly, but I just didn't have the energy. So at long last. Have you ever read the uh, the Secret Garden? The you know, oh, Francis Hodge Summers, my the Secret Garden. Mm, it's not, I don't think so. Barnet. It's fantastic. Barnet, yes, Francis Hodge's Barnet. It's one of my favorite kids' stories. It starts out kind of gruesome. It's. Uh, oh, I think I might have seen a film or something, but I. Didn't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little girl who's you know who's British girl whose family are expats that live in India, and when she's a small baby or a young child, everyone, including all her parents, dies of the plague. And she's the or flu, some crazy flu that goes around India. Everybody gets it and dies. And so she gets moved to this relative's house in Wales, in the countryside. And she starts out as this very angry, very yellow, kind of sallow, unhealthy child. And then she finds a key to a, a door that leads to a garden that no one can get into. And she starts working in the garden. And her cheeks get ruddy. She just totally changes. It completely changes her. And then she meets a couple kids and one like has, anyway, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic book. I will sometimes still reread it. You know, it's like a kid's novel. So it's like for 11 or 12, you know, nine or eight or nine. Sometimes they're very enjoyable as adults as well. Right. They're good. It's such a story. And I love that it's kind of, I forget like, oh my God, this beginning is so dark she's by herself she's like a little kid and everybody has died around her wow yeah and like and then she anyway i mean they're not fantastic people but they are i'm gonna get some water yes yes and tell me what's working on this so ladies how is this mixing going if you're having a little back and forth and frustration it's this valid it's so I, I'm struggling. Very I, I, green. Yeah. That looks very green. So number one, you should add a little bit of your red, more red into it. Just go take red and put it right in there. But also, I think that's a cool yellow. It is. Yeah. Um, so, so is this your shadow color, Louise? All right. Yeah, yeah. So there's your yellow. Um, so remember, you're trying to get a little bit darker in here, or you don't have to have it so white. Um, so Julia, add, it's too green, so add a little red to it, but also observe that that's a cool yellow, and I don't think it works as well as the warmer yellow. Try a warmer yellow mix with yeah. that. But, but just, but notice it's very common, that happens a lot, and this is where people quit, on that because they're like, I don't know, I didn't get the same color that the teacher did. But if you're getting something that's green, not a shadowed yellow, add whatever color is not that's in that mix of those two colors, just add a little bit more of that color. So Louise, I see that you have this kind of orangey color. Are you there, Louise? I'm sorry, I was mute. I, I think it's because of the red that I have. Yeah, the red is very orange. Yeah. You only, only have that one red. Uh, and the blue you're using is? That is cadmium blue. Cadmium blue is not a good blue. You got another blue? Oh, sorry. The No, ultramarine blue, sorry. Ultramarine blue. Yeah. Um, so I think part of the problem here with that orange color that's up the first one that you sent, it's got, mm -hmm. is it got white in it? No. 
No? Okay, so you need to add more shadow color in. Okay. Because right now it's looking too, um, it's not quite right. Add a little bit more shadow and see what happens. I wanna see it a little bit darker and then we'll know what to do with it. So remember you guys, mixing is, is, an art, is a learned art. Uh, some people take to it really naturally. Other people really struggle with it. It's, it's an easy thing. It's not as simple as it looks. I think partly because we carry over this idea from childhood that like, I should just take half of one thing and half of the other to mix. <laughs> not the truth it sort of depends on we have used these same colors to do every painting to do our orange with our blue shadow you know with the neutralized shadow to do the apple the same colors so it's all different ranges depending on what you're trying to what colors you're trying to show let's see better julia see how that starts to look a little bit grayer and less very nice that's good that's really good. I like I'm getting myself in a right mess though. I think you know the technique of you take the take the kind of the color down and then you kind of add a bit to that. I'm like, I've got all these piles everywhere. <laughs> well, you should just be coming down, just keep coming down the line and then yeah, I've already right. That. <laughs> yeah. Um that's okay. I think I'm used to my pastels, you know, where you just mix it on the paper. Um so yeah, this is this takes a little bit more effort. Right. So Louise, you're definitely going to need more colors. I think that's true. Just true. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up your drawing, but I'm not able to see it. Is it not coming up? There we go. Okay. Um, you're, I try adding a little bit more blue to your purple. Okay. okay. Right. Because part of that problem is the purple is almost like a, a red. Yes. Uh, and thank you for circling those so I know what was what. Um, your purple is like too red. So what happens when you mix red and yellow? You get orange, right? You yeah. don't get the neutralized version. So a little bit more blue into your purple and then put a little bit of more purple into your mix. I mean, these are beginner basics, right? So I'm just trying to get you guys back on the, whatever we missed from color mixing. And Julia, all this stuff is relevant to um, pastel work, as you know. So, um, although we've got way more colors to deal with in pastels, this idea of mixing and how to sort of adjust things, how you mix, this is important. This is really important fundamental stuff. So don't worry if you're not getting it, you know, super. And think about how you're organizing. To me, I'm like, oh, I know this came from here. And I know this came from here. I know this came from here. This came from there. And if I want to keep coming down, I might pull more here. So um, um, trust me, this is more organized than just throwing all your paints in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and spreading out right you get you lose like we'd be done with this palette paper already if that was the case so that it's just a way of kind of thinking and organizing i don't know how you guys feel about this i feel like january is fabulous for organizing i spend a lot of time cleaning and reorganizing oh gosh i need to right setting this, this, well but you reset you reorganized your schedule to accommodate oh, that, so I, I added something big in so now i have very little time left. now you have to figure out all the other stuff <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like laughing about that work it gets in the way you know it does it totally does um so when we're ready to start painting right and i'm not working with an underpainting here we're not going to talk about that till i come back on my trip. Where are you going, Rio? Going to New Jersey. Oh, Next wow. To paint uh, three paintings, three big paintings. I mean, for a client or? Yeah, for a client. And yeah. you thought it was easier to go there rather than. Yeah, to yeah. Them. We wanted three four by five foot paintings, and then they wanted them shipped kind of ready to hang. And I was like, 
if you're not going to find somebody who can stretch them for you and like do that, you know, and pay that money, it makes more sense to fly me there to paint them. So uh, for the February 1st through the 11th, I will be in a, I will be in New Jersey painting four by foot, three, four by five foot paintings. <laughs> and Are then these um, done. previous clients? Uh, this is the first time I've done something really big for them. So, so and yeah. So where are you going to stay? With them. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. You know them and like them. I know them and like them. Yeah, I wouldn't do it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. It was so funny. I was talking to somebody yesterday whose immediate reaction was, are you going to get murdered? <laughs> no, I didn't. I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking it might Isn't be uncomfortable. Yeah, know? like you're like, yeah, because you're, you're, you're like getting the practicality of this. It's quite funny. She was like, are you going to get murdered? I don't know. Um, so well, you yeah. could leave your dress where you're going to be. <laughs> Right. Yes. Yes. I, it's actually people I know quite well, so uh, it's not a problem. It'll be fun to stay with them. And the pressure is that she's uh, throwing a reveal party for these paintings on my last day. Because oh, wow. everybody's coming over, so they got to be done. You definitely have a deadline. I have a deadline. <laughs> so for the next two weeks, I'm going to give you an assignment. And uh, Diana will open the channel and class channel and advise, she said, as she can. Um, but your assignment is going to be to do a still life. When I come back, we'll start talking about underpaintings. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I don't want to use that brush. What brush do I want to use today? Mm -hmm. I think that's too big. I want a flat brush, but I don't want something that's so small. This one has worked for me well in the past. Um, I will show you the kind of brushes I don't like. Have this one. Can you see it's got a kind of rounded? Uh, because you lose the edge. Yeah, yeah and it and it leaves marks. Like so, I'll show you just down here. Like right when I paint with it, it's like it just leaves this kind of scoop that bothers me. It looks too um, kind of artificial and man-made and not like organic. So I tend to like a kind of scruffier brush. This one is a slider, meaning it's higher on one end and lower on the other. And it's a little bit thick. And the, you can see it's kind of raggedy. So when I start painting, did it uh, did it arrive like this, or you made it like this by using it? I don't even remember. <laughs> probably a little of both. <laughs> I think we make probably them like this. Both, probably both. I'm sure I've done something to make it to worsen it. Um, I decided I really liked this um, first section here. Let me get a little bit more red. You can see how green. Look at how green, I think, I think even like on this video screen, you can see how green everything looks. Uh, I'm mixing a color, so I'm adding more red to create this kind of more neutral color. And uh, I'm going to paint it in, in the darker areas. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to this color. See how there's the darker and here's the lighter. And I'm gonna lay that right next to So you can see there's a pretty hard edge here. And then I'm gonna take the scruffy brush and I'm gonna take a little bit more of the light medium. This is all shadow now, right? And I'm gonna blend over mostly through tapping to get rid of that hard line. So that, and then I'm like, oh, I've lost a little bit of my hard line. So I'm gonna pull in a little bit more dark. I wanna make sure I get enough red in here so it doesn't look too green. See how I can kind of go back and forth. 
I'm kind of patting in to make sure I haven't lost my edge here. Maybe down here. And then I'm cleaning out my brush very thoroughly. I'm going to take a blankie and squeeze it so I've got that. You can get that off. And then I'm going to take just some of the basic yellow up in here. And look at the dramatic. See, Louise, I don't need any. I don't need any. And in fact, I don't need any uh, white yet. This is entirely doing the job of value. And now I'm going to take my yellow. I'm going to kind of load my brush up with the yellow and blend it over into the medium and then the dark. I can do this probably. I have to keep cleaning my brush off and adding more yellow. I can do this. So see how I'm kind of bringing in this light to sort of neutralize a little bit the dramatic difference, but there's still a difference. And I'm kind of dragging it in. And I can do like uh, three strokes, maybe four strokes before I have to clean my brush out. So I want to maintain the light, medium, dark difference, but I want to I want to push it back just a little bit. It's a little bit more subtle. Lemons are more subtle. So I'm kind of dragging, and I might have to go back in, and I feel like I have to go back in a little bit and see how I'm going back in with my medium. And I'm darkening it just a little bit, but I don't want it to be so dark as it was. And I want my edges to be soft. Now, because Diana has two pretty distinct light sources, it's also a little bit dark here. So I'm going to, and notice that's really dark. That's like a bit too dark, but I'll, I'll start with the dark. And then I'm going to blend upward using just my light. See that? So that's the, that's the right, this is the, and we'll talk about that little beaded, uh, Olga asked that great question last week of the little, how you make the sort of texture, uh, which we will do with white and yellow towards the end. Yeah, that works very well. I didn't never realize it was so simple. Yeah, it's a really fun, and you don't have to do so much, right? It's not a lot of heavy lifting, it's just a little. So I want my lemon to have a clear transition between light, medium, and dark, but I also want that to be not so strongly because it's a subtle transition. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here. So if you wanna watch me again, definitely feel free to watch me again. I'm constantly pulling in red into this shadow so it's not too so here. So um Leah, I'm way behind and my paint is drying up, which is great. Yep. But your that that lighter yellow, you were using the warm one, right? Not the cool yeah, one. Yeah, I haven't I haven't touched the cool one yet. Absolutely. Okay. You are you may or may not have that, right? Um uh you may or may not have that uh uh option depending on how how much paint you have how much you know what how many much variation of yellow you have but if you do yeah i found the warm yellow i think is working better on this lemony line so you can see once again i've got dark here i'm going to clean my brush i'm going to scoop just some regular there we go light this is look at the difference And then, because this is a very strong difference between here and here, I'm going to brush in a little bit more plain yellow in to the medium section, particularly. Okay. At this point, I have too much shadow. I have to clean up my brush again, go back in, and I'm kind of loading the paint, I'm kind of piling it on top so it doesn't mix so much. 
it's very often easier when you're blending to blend light into dark. But it, I don't like to make hard and fast rules on that because I feel like, and see how I'm even coming into the very dark area. Yeah, I like how that looks. Um, because sometimes a subject will require that your edges, you know, there's more drama in your darks. Sometimes it makes sense to, to take your darks into your lights, but often, very often not. And yes, your paint will dry. And see how I'm kind of my brush. I'm I'm not sort of I'm not um, heavily. I'm not doing this so much, right? Because when I do this, I push and I create hard lines and I thin out my paints. I'm kind of tapping. I'm kind of lightly pulling. I'm almost very lightly touching the canvas to create a different kind of feeling here. Don't worry, if you don't get it all at once, it is the practice. This is the practice. And these are basics. You will practice them many times. And already they look kind of yum yum. I like them. And if you want me to, actually, maybe I will do what I did last time. Take my camera off for a second and show you up close with a video. I'm gonna go to WhatsApp. I know this is a little disjointed for me to jump back down, but you've got pictures here. Yeah, Louise, that's looking better, a little better. I mean, part of the problem is you just don't have the colors. Do you have Alizar and Crimson? No. Okay. Part of the problem is you just don't have the colors. Just do your best. Okay. Do the best that you can and note to yourself and make a note to yourself. Yes. I need colors. <laughs> so to show this, I'm about to video kind of working on this close so you guys can see this again. So I am... Kind of mixing my colors. All right, I'm going to try it. By the way, Julia, what kind of pastel set do you have? Mixing. Uh, can you give me just a second, Sandra? Because I'm mixing sorry. and I will. Sorry, I know normally we're all like freely chatting, and that's a good thing. So I'm here. I'm like laying in my dark. Oh, that looks a little green. So I'm adding a little bit more red. There we go. Right. So my dark is more dramatic. Now I add a little bit of more yellow. I make it a little bit lighter so it becomes kind of a medium. See how I'm not pressing so hard. I'm more like, oh, you're you not it. showing anything. Baby. Sorry, you can't see it. I'm making the video right now. I'm oh, making okay. it for Sorry. you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking to you as if you can see it. I'm an idiot. Carry on. Sorry, just keep going. I'm going to make this video for you and then. I'm loading my brush with just the yellow paint. There we go. And sort of blending it in. You're right, you totally can't see what I'm doing. You will in a minute. And I think it's good to look at it up close. So you can see. There we go. All right. It's coming in. <laughs> It'll take a minute. So there's an up close look at this mark making process. Now let me get back up on. Sorry, Sandra, carry on. Do your. Uh, sorry, Julia. Um, what what pastel set do you have? And like I've got a like a range. So I've got some Sennelier. Um, mm -hmm. um, I've got some Jackson's own. Which oh, okay. How do you find the Jacksons? 
I really like them actually. They're sort of they're very forgiving, which is which is good. They're kind of in that soft range because they're and made by somebody or a country member who they're made by a big brand. Are they okay? Mm. I, yeah, I I'll try I, to I find like out. Them. I find them a little bit easier than the than the Sinelia. My my favourites though are Unison, so I've got quite a lot of them. Ah yes, and then I think the Unison set. My favourites are Virgil. Okay. Uh, which is a French. I like that they're like really. Smooth. And are they very expensive, Sandra? So no, no. You know, I order them in France directly from. The, they're expensive here because for some reason the export the uh, distributor is ah. really has a big price. But when I order them straight from France, uh, because it's going outside the EU, I get like uh, the the VAT off. Right. And um, I even get them in a wooden box and I get like 50 of my choice or their choice, depends what wow. you want to nice. for, I think uh, $200 or 200 euros, but it's, but it's with a wooden box. If you don't want to, if you just want the card box, it's even less. So nice. I don't, for pastels, that quality, I don't find they're that expensive. I, yeah, I haven't tried them. It's a bit recommendation. <laughs> Um, I like that they they allow you details. They're, I mean, the Unison are my second favorite, but they're I, Unison are more dusty than Giro. Giro are not that dusty. They're they're firm and buttery at the same time. Very difficult to explain. They sound more like the Rembrandts. Rembrandt should be. Oh, no, Rembrandt is a low brand compared to the, what yeah. I'm talking about. This is a this is a top of a range brand nice. i like this paul rubens brand i have to say i mean it's not that many colors but i have to say i've never the... heard of it Don't know i know it's weird anything. it's like some it's got it looks korean it's korean I, you tell me here i'm going to show you the yeah show me the box show you the box is that korean that's chinese that's chinese okay So it's Chinese. Yep. Or a Chinese, I think either it's a knockoff or, but I'm kind of happy with them. They were $48, $38 for like 24 or 38. Well, it's good to start, you know. Yeah. I mean, for, uh, but uh, that's why I was asking Julia because she's been into it for a while. Yeah, I, I keep buying different things. I, you know, I yeah. <laughs> Like, well, oh, I've got almost done. all the brands because I really got into it a few years ago. Um, so I totally understand. You cannot. Yeah, that's the thing about pastels. I mean, you just can't beat them for color. They're the most vivid. They're so vivid. Things, They're... But they are so messy and so expensive and you need so many things. So like you can't help it. Right. You just have to keep buying. I got. I, I, hmm. I was going to say, if you can get past the dust, then yeah, it's the best thing around. Do you know what I've, what I've taken to doing um, is I've, I've got a um, like wallpaper. You know, you, you can line your walls with wallpaper. Uh -huh. I just, I put a sheet under my board and I take it down. And then I almost do some of my mixing and messing around on that. And then when I finish, I just unstick the paper and I roll it over on itself and then I put it in the bin. I'm using a uh, dog pee pads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for great pain. Right. Just, but you can just fantastic. You can just uh, throw it sure, away. Hold on, hold on. Let me pop you up. Right. God, Brilliant. Pee. These are the ones for big dogs, you know, like great Danes, because they come in different sizes and they're very cheap. <laughs> and I find it also yeah. it's got like soft material that grips so the dust doesn't fly around. And then uh, I can just throw it away or reuse it if it's not that soil, but usually fold it at least so it doesn't fly off. I, I think what I like about painting is that I can probably work with 12 colors and get everything I want through mixing. Um, but you know, pastel is like pre-mixed sticks of paint. 
I mean, you could still mix them um, and blend and, you know, combine colors and layer. Uh, but I like the idea that my, you know, my needs can be kind of met simply with just a few colors. Yes, they, they say, you know, but when you begin, at least I was seeing that in watercolor, but you should try to start with just three colors or six, yeah. just that's a, what we're doing. a that's cool what we're doing. and a warm of a, each of our primaries. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. We're working really? oh. with like the, yeah, that's what we've been doing. That's what but you've only got to. Two colors, yeah. So that there, uh, well, there's the primaries, which are three, right? There's three primaries, and then we're testing a cool and a warm version of each of them. And we've been using the same five to six colors each week. So, but what I mean is, your lemon is only yellow and green, pretty much. What's that? Your lemon is only yellow, right? Yellow and green. It's not like a complex landscape where you need to do so much. We've taken it right because this is beginning, right? These are basics. Right. So we're exploring the ideas of mixing, but we have used the same six colors, some variation of the same six colors each week. We met, we started with a red apple that had shadow on it. We went to a, an orange that had shadow on it, and now with a lemon that had shadow on it. So, but we're using the same colors for all of them. It's just different variations of the mixing. Because to me, this is how you really start to understand the power of mixing. Yes, right? absolutely. How you learn it. And because you're using the same colors, but different variations. Um, I, I agree. This is how you learn. And I've been terrible at it because I just buy colors. Like I did in pastels. That's what I did for watercolor. You know, Sandra, what I found out about you is that when you're ready, when you want to, you'll do it. So, so I don't worry about you. I know you <laughs> will like do it when you see a value for doing it. Um, it's a, you know, it is, it's a hassle, but um, it's a great, you know, it's a great, you know, it, and I was noticing, I was like, and for me, you know, I've been doing it so long, I hadn't really spent a lot of work showing people how to mix colors but then i realized oh yeah there's these common mistakes that happen right you have too much your your mix you have too much of one of the colors in the mix it looks too green it looks too purple it looks too blah 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 doesn't look gray enough and i'm like oh yeah this is how you adjust so i like this idea of um that's why i came up with this idea of doing simple things yes just and listening to you is very useful because that's exactly what I used to get. I would get like a color that was completely not what I wanted. Right, and I didn't it's like fix too brownish it. or too greenish or too... Oh, it was like even color. something that was completely unexpected, like not... And I like, I mean, you know, the way to fix it is obviously just take a little bit and then put another color in and, you, you know, as opposed to try to alter that's the not whole... In your, right? Right. So here, the the idea, right, is that we're working with one with the complementary colors, purple and yellow, uh, green and red, um, blue and orange contain one primary, right, in the pair and one secondary, meaning they're the mixture of the other two, the other two primary. So it's all different variations of that same like they're all it's all the same right so so when you're mixing the 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 secondary sometimes there's too much of one color and you can't really tell till you mix it in with your primary what's going to happen so but the nice thing is there's only three colors right so if you're seeing the color that you don't want you add whatever will whatever is not showing up in the mix for the gray um and once one gets into the habit of that it becomes uh, easier. Um, and then mm -hmm. here's something really cool, which I quite love. So, um, which I realize you can do very easily. I can take, to create a darker shadow, like here on the bottom, I can just take blue, red, and yellow and mix them together until I get a kind of dark that I like. And then that goes, I want a neutral, I want it a little bit lighter, right? And then I can kind of get my shadow color. I can also get, so I can get in my cast shadow, which is darker. And I don't know if you saw that, I just used my ladies, but I just used my, so I, I mix all three primaries, 
to make the cash shadow. And I and I mix it darker. We want it to be dark, right? So the sort of emphasis is more on the dark colors. And just adding that in helps a lot. If I want to mix my, um, and I can take something kind of similar. This is a fairly green, green. So I've got, let's see, I've got blue and yellow to make green. All, all greens, all sort of natural greens have a touch of red in them. So I'm mixing red and yellow to get green. Maybe adding a little bit of blue to make it darker, right? So all these same colors are being used different in different combinations to create my stem. Now, greens are a tricky one. They're really hard to mix. So sometimes I like, um, once you start getting the hang of mixing, I might ask you to add, uh, I said I had 12 colors in my palette, viridian green and phthalo green are, are two of those. It's good to start with the green because this is a very, we can't exactly mix the green that we want. Oh, I haven't tried with cobalt, I might try with cobalt. Um, this is lighter. Yeah, hold on. So like, I this is not the green that we have there. It's too warm. However, I'm gonna keep it because I like, I think it doesn't look bad. And we'll sort of explore adding other, you know, sort of, Pumps, but I, I want to work with these three colors just to see what I can get from them. And already just kind of adding in those elements kind of makes this feel a little bit more. By the way, Sandra, what are you working on? I'm doing, well, because I arrived late and I didn't think I'd have time to mess with my pastel, I'm doing an ink rabbit, this one. Hold I'm gonna hold, can I spotlight you for a second? Oh. I'm already really liking, oh, it's beautiful. So I'm there. Is that that, oh, Sandra, wowie, zowie, wowie, 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 wowie. So, wow. yeah, I figured it's my style because you can see over here. Yes. <laughs> it's a very good photo, very detailed photo. It's a beautiful photo. It's a beautiful photo. It would actually be interesting for you to, are you going to do that as a watercolor next? Actually, I would almost like to, because there's one thing about it, it's, it's very blue. Yeah, I like those blues in there. I think and those so, are- So um, it'd be nice to just do that. I'm beginning to miss, I love my uh, ink, but I'm beginning to miss color, particularly when <laughs> I hear you about mixing greens. Yeah, I think the thing is, right, that like you, the value studies really help with color. Yes. They bring you back to color because you start to connect color and value. Some people do that automatically. It's just a natural thing for them. Other people, it's a struggle, right? What's a light? What's a medium? What's a dark, right? What, what is, how, it's sometimes yellow is a light. Sometimes it's a medium. Sometimes it's a dark, just depending on what it's next to. So uh, there's this kind of shifting. Once you get that concept, it, it's easier to kind of isolate the lights and darks in, in black and whites. And then that takes you to color, right? Yeah, then you because can uh, I never thought about value when I did uh, pastels or watercolor. I just could tell the value from the color. But now this yeah. forces me to, to, to do it. So think of it. So you're one of those people who does it kind of naturally, but notice when you're consciously doing it, it just, it just like um, makes it more conscious for you what's happening. Then you mm -hmm. have a little control, right? You can nuance a little bit more. Uh, then you add met blend, you know, mixing into it. And then you have even more control because you know, like what colors to make to like, you know, create the shadows of the other color. And it's like, that's kind of how those. Uh, so in pastels, 
you know, I have three sets of Giro and I have a whole set that's actually neutrals and um, for shadows and things like that. Like I, they have fantastic uh, gray violets, which are fin that, that brand, which are absolutely perfect for shadows. Yeah, fabulous. Um, By the way, I'm gonna now introduce another color into the mix because I would like to put in my background and I can't get what I want from these colors. So here's where we start adding in one or two others. I'm gonna get this, it's this color called light violet. So this so color has some white in it. And the shadow, Leah, the one under that? Your, your lemons, that was just a bit of red, bit of blue, bit of yellow. Is that right, the primary yeah. color? Yeah, it's the mix of all of the three. Yeah, with the dark, with the, yes, the shadow. Yeah, it's absolutely the three mish, mishmash together. If it's too green, add more red. If it's too blue, add more yellow. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's kind of how it works. And then here, I'm going to switch brushes to something bigger. Um, bigger and flatter, because I want to add kind of a purple here. And I'm going to demonstrate this. So if I want my background color, you guys do not have to you know, do this. You can pick whatever color you want for your background. I know that purple and yellow are complementary colors. So if I want to kind of pop them forward, and my yellow is kind of lighter. So I'm putting a kind of darkish purple and see how I'm leaning my big brush against the edge of the lemon and pulling outward. So I can shape my lemon and do the same thing. My brushwork leaves a lot to be desired. I'm, I'm kind of definitely haven't got the hang of this. Yeah, so just keep practicing, Julia. Keep practicing. It's difficult, but it comes for brush. It comes. Yeah, this I is come this to, why, very this, hard after pastels. This is why. Uh, and sorry about that, you guys. As usual, once again, my internet sort of did its usual. I'm going to shut off for no reason. Uh, here we are back at it. These are, that's the whole reason I'm teaching this. The whole reason I'm teaching this unit in this way, I want you to practice. Um, there are two other lessons, Julia, you might find helpful recorded yeah. where we do similar things, but with different color combinations, right? And Louise, look, I've actually added some white to my purple back here, my light violet. So I can make it a little bit lighter. Oh, that's pretty, actually. I accidentally got a little yellow in there, but it looks it looks kind of nice. I like it. And see how I'm using my background with a pretty, pretty big brush. And I'm using the corner of my big brush here. But mostly I'm doing this pull away technique. Lean the brush with the paint against the side and pull away from the side. And then I get rid of the, and then I kind of tap around to get rid of the, there we go, here, here, yeah. If it was easy, Julia, everybody do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been i think about a year since i got my acrylics out so yeah I'm, it's I'm a, so out of practice it's a great practice for you because it will influence everything else you do i promise 
So absolutely influence even as this you have this kind of awkward like oh uh, you know that feeling of sort of spazziness of um my i don't know how to use the brush you know you're sort of figuring out how to use the brush again and and i picked purple by the way because i it it you know look at what it does for yellow hello himself somebody just came down from having a nap it, it's like how much water do you use as well because it's like well, it, you it keeps drying up um yeah well yes you've got to put more you got to work fast so you're going to have to keep yeah. make and keep i wouldn't use that much water mm -hmm. this is what happens i mean like here look at this so if i use a lot of water i'm trying to mix this so you can see it if i use a lot of water like this it covers very lightly yeah if i use a more paint it covers darkly so it just depends on what often you want i don't know i mean i think for this exercise it's more helpful to have more paint less water the water isn't really going to keep your paint dry uh, a wet that much longer it just dries quick so that's the challenge of it, right? You're gonna need to. Yeah. And that's my problem because I am slow. You're slow. <laughs> okay, it's the first time back and it's not your preferred medium. It's okay, you'll get there. You'll totally get there. I appreciate your pointing out how awkward it is though, how kind of tough it is um, because that's it. That's part of it, right? Part of what we're trying to do is um, push the push the we're pushing. I'm pushing your skill level, and as you're consciously taking this in, you're kind of learning it more deeply, which means you're kind of questioning everything you do. That's okay. That's like how we learn new things. The good thing is that it will make your pastel, it will instruct your pastels. It, it will instruct, right? It instructs everything. It, it starts to integrate these ideas. By the way, I put on a little bit of buff titanium. That's here. So you can see the white is very bright, and the buff titanium is a little bit like kind of um, darker, uh, duskier, kind of like creamier. And I'm now putting that in because I like buff titanium. You don't have to have it. It's it's not a required color or anything, but it's kind of a I fine. I like it for light colored pets. Right. It's it's a good, in it's the watercolor. Creamy and neutral. And yet, so you can see I'm using the same principle. I'm coming right up against the little lemon here and then pulling back. Leah, I'm going to have to go because um, you have to go to work in 15 minutes. Yes, you got it. Great I'll work. I'll show you very time. much. Shall I send you a yes. photo or just look it up? Just show uh, you. Hold it up. Let's hold it up. Ah, fantastic. Fantastic. So you can keep working on it tomorrow, and then when you're done, you can. Um, and then when you're done, you can uh, start on a color version, either using watercolor or using pastels. I think that's a good nice. like, kind of duo assignment. Okay, um, yes, but I might do that. Depends yeah. how quickly I, I end tomorrow. And on Saturday, unfortunately, I'll have to leave, to leave an hour early because I'm going hiking with some friends. Okay, so, well, great. You know, you get it. And we got Saturday, we got Sunday. We got yes, Saturday. exactly. Is there is there a lot of uh, course on Sunday? Yep, always on. Yes, I don't think we're. See, by the time I've done his course and my dialogue, I'm just just can't do the Sunday. No, I know. that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, don't worry. And you know, it's only for like people who have time who want to do it. Uh, by the way, this Europe group, um, it is good if you're wanting to catch an extra class. I'm going to be painting this same subject again, but using oil paint rather than acrylic paint. However, most of the students are using acrylic. So we will repeat the exercise. 
Most exercises will repeat on Sundays. That's Sunday at 7.30 for you, Julia, and 8.30 for you, Louise. So if you feel like jumping in, it's a great way to, you know, it's a, that's a great group. I like this group. This is, and the class is like three hours. You, of course, don't have to stay for three hours if you're, you know, it's too late for you, but it's a great chance to kind of get, get in. Sandra, good to see you. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, very nice seeing you guys. Have a nice day at work. Bye, Leah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. There we go. And you can see now I've kind of added in my background, which helps. I think I'm flattening a little bit here, which means I should either lighten or darken. I think I'm going to lighten. I'm going to take a little bit of this buff titanium and white. See if I can lighten around here. Uh, it's still too wet. I got to wait till it dries. We're gonna talk about underpaintings next week. One of the problems, right, which I'm specifically and very consciously not talking about right now, is that your first layer is always a little flat when it comes to painting, right? Because you can see, so mostly we do underpaintings, but I didn't wanna throw that in before we started talking about color mixing. Anyway, by the end of this lesson, you've usually done a lot of, um, You've usually done a lot of uh, uh, layers anyway, because you keep going back and forth over the <laughs> same thing. Um, I wanted to know if you guys wanted to see very briefly how to do the little white dots that are kind of here. These like, oh yeah. Things. So let me demo that. Um, so we've got, okay. I'm gonna mix, I'm just trying to figure out how to organize this so we can see it. Let's push you a little bit this way. There we go. So I've got a little bit, here's where white comes into the picture, not even just white. I've got a little bit of white and I've got this kind of lemony yellow, this light yellow, although you can use whatever yellow you want. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the yellow in with the, it, with the white. It's going to be piled. It's going to be kind of heavy on my brush. My brush isn't super wet. Right? So I'm going to come here. And where this is, I'm going to start. It's a little bit like the way we did clouds. So, and we'll probably do clouds again because it's a great exercise in learning how to use the paintbrush and how to do light edges. So you'll see I've got a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm starting here in the center and I'm kind of tapping and going around in circles that get gradually bigger, right? And my paint kind of gets more rubbed out. Oops, I have happen to have a little bit of, how did that get in there? I got a little bit of blue in my mix. So it left little dots. So now I'm gonna go back in again. Okay, and you can see I'm kind of like, I'm just patting. So it's a little bit lighter towards the center and I definitely need some cadmium yellow medium. So I'm gonna put a little bit more here. And now I'm taking a little bit of white and cadmium yellow medium. And I'm just kind of tapping out. I'm using the corner of my brush to create this feeling where there's a transition between light and medium or highlight and light. Um, where there's a transition, I'm putting little tappy dots. See that? And not too many. And then now I'm going to grab a little bit of, I'm going to actually mix a little bit more of my, my uh, medium shadow. And I'm pulling that in there too. So I'm just kind of tapping to create a feeling
of these kind of little dotty edges like that. So lighter in the center. And then let my paint run out and then a little bit more yellow. The next layer. This is definitely something that you can do too much of. You see now I have this kind of feeling and I'm going to do the same thing up here. Once again. Here I got nothing, right? So now I'm starting with this tapping edge, which is yellow. See how my circle just keeps getting bigger? And see how that creates this feeling, not only of a soft edge, but of kind of a little bright spot. And now I'm adding a little bit more yellow medium so I can kind of blend out that ed the edges and so dramatic. So that's how you do it. You create this feeling. I'm coming along here where this edge is. I'm kind of tapping a little bit with my yellow and medium, just a little bit. And see how it creates this kind of, and see where it doesn't, where I, I can see where my edges get to. Strong. So there's a little bit of a tappy thing happening. There's a little bit of a glare. Oh, should I turn this off? No, that's terrible. Sorry. A little bit of a glare coming from somewhere in my studio, I think, actually. There we go. So you can see this is a little bit more even than it looked. I still have a couple of edges I could clean up. We use a smaller brush for that. Fill a flat. Kind of these areas are probably handled best. Mess. Ugh. Painting, such a mess. There we go. Oh, such a fetching. Lemons are such a, whenever I paint lemons, people always want to buy them. So definitely one of those <laughs> color coordinates. And don't worry, if you don't get it, if you don't, um, you can send it in, you guys, if you want to, and I'll take a look. If you want to send where you are on the thread, I'll take a look. I feel like I a little bit lost my medium, so I'm going to go in with some, I'm going to mix some medium. See, my, my paint is already completely dried, so. I'm going back in and mixing more medium color. I can come back in and like kind of dot it in. I want to get my dark back. Sometimes you lose it. So there's a lot of going back and forth, which is okay. There we go. That's kind of nice. It's kind of darker here where the one object hits the other. So I'm gonna take some of this darker, might even make it a little bit darker. See why I'm making it just a little bit darker back here. I'm still gonna soften the edge, but I kind of want this, even though this is in shadow, it's still a little bit lighter. To have that edge come forward. Yeah, that's this is still too strong. So I'm tapping it away. It's dark, but I'm softening it. There's a lot of back and forth as you're playing around with this idea. Okay, 
Okay. Just a second, Julie. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take a look. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess, but you know, it's good. It's good to practice. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. I need to be the decide decider of that. <laughs> I haven't started my background. The mass is like probably pretty great. Um, let's see. Oops, I have to go find it again. Ah, come on, don't fight me. There we go. So your um your lilac background that you've done there is that is that um that was a color that looks great Julia I like it I think you're I think you're getting somewhere um so maybe uh, this was something called uh, yeah that's right that's when I got cut off so this is where I was like I'm adding another color into the mix because I wanted this particular color for my background it's called oh. light violet that's okay. Okay mixed color so you can mix your own purple if you have a fun purple you want to use you can totally use that but i think you're coming along i think it's coming along louise how's it going for you uh it's a bit of a battle <laughs> but it's okay send me, the send me what you got and then we'll talk about it it may just be colors it might be and yeah i think also the paper is not helping us <laughs> yeah paper, this paper is not made for acrylic paint it just isn't. I know you're still in your watercolor head. You need to get out of that. <laughs> and like it. And you'll see there's advantages to it because it's easier. Ultimately, it's easier as you get into it. Well, I'm just I'm just darkening it actually. So I might send another photo in a second. But... Okay. Well, just work on it then. If you think you know what to do, then I'm not gonna you just yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I always appreciate your advice. It's just um, that's not so bad, honey. So the biggest thing is that actually your color mixing is pretty great. So the biggest thing is that your value up here, yeah. this is still too, it, the line is too hard. Yeah. But actually, this is not bad at all. Yeah, but your paper's going to fall apart. But actually, color mixing, very good, considering, and blending work, not so bad. And then this is a little bit strong, right? So you need to get a little bit of light blended in over on top of the, um, on top of your dark shadow color. Yeah. Okay. But very nice. Actually, not a disaster. Both of you. Now, see, I won't believe you the next time you tell me it's a mess. I'm like, these look great. <laughs> these are great. Very good. Very excellent um, uh, efforts. I like it. There's nothing, and you'll just keep getting better at it. I mean, it's a whole thing. Did you paint spheres with me last year, Julia? Um, I think I did one or two classes, but I ran out of. Um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't get to them. So. Yeah, yeah, because we because of the time. Yeah, we did. This is a variation. One of my students was like, "I was like, I'm not going to make you guys paint spheres this year." One of my students said. Hey, this apple looks a lot like a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> These lemons look a lot like a sphere. And I'm like, you caught me. My, my note, my, I wanted you to do a sphere, but I didn't want you to feel like you were painting a sphere because painting the spheres kind of is a very important exercise, but it's not so satisfying. Whereas this, right, feels a little bit more satisfying feel real doesn't it yeah because you're like kind of motivated to get it right like where's the sphere it just never you know it's just this never ending like i'll never get the sphere exactly right thing and you don't you know so anyways i was like i think this will be more satisfying than the sphere while still you know mimicking the You could go back and forth forever, really, honestly. How often do you do you kind of clean your brush as well, Leah? Um, when I mean, when I'm working, when I want to, pretty often, uh, if I, because I mix with it. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, so I mix, I clean it a lot. 
because I'm mixing with my brush on the canvas usually. So, um, you know, when I'm trying, when I don't want one color to adulterate another, I clean out my brush pretty thoroughly. No. <laughs> oh, I recognize that. <laughs> It's also about um, getting the right number, amount of paint, you know, because you you kind of I'm either doing too much or too little, and then I, I'm using too much and it goes hard. And <laughs> you have to figure out how much paint you need. Yeah, and you can only do that by putting too much or too little. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy you're in class, Julia, because I hoped that we would see you if I changed it. So and once a month, I have to go to the office. The first Thursday of every month, I have to go into the office. I've moved all my days around so that I can not be in the office on Thursdays. But once a month, I have to go. Next week, I have to go into the office. Okay. But that's a good day to go because I won't be here. So there will be an assignment, but you're all going to be working on it on your own. So the assignment next week will be to do to to draw to set up draw and paint your own still life of the three objects with some organization of the three objects that we have painted over the last three weeks. Lemons, oranges, and apples. Oh gosh, and it is actually almost time. We're gonna go about five or 10 more minutes because we started a little bit late. So let's go another five or 10 and then we're gonna stop. But I mean, you can keep going. Absolutely. Louise, have you got somebody cooking you dinner or are you gonna have to go and do it for yourself in a bit? Or have you eaten um, already? I live by myself, so it's all on me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Art is food. Who's cooking you dinner, Julia? You I'm have... cooking. I'm cooking dinner tonight. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got. I've got. And they're all outside the door going. Is she finished yet? <laughs> so Louise, now you've lost you a little bit of your. You've lost your light, right? There's too much dark. So remember, when you're blending. It's often better, particularly with a subject like the lemon, if you look here, it's better to blend light over dark, not dark into light. Yeah. Your light, your dark will overpower very quickly. I'll try and add more. Yeah, so you kind of lost it. So um, it's easy to lose. That's easy to lose. You're just gonna keep, uh, I, I would recommend trying this exercise again with canvas, actual yeah. canvas. Yeah. What are you making for dinner, Julia? I'm going to do just like a little casserole thing tonight. It's a cheats one. I just got to shove it in the oven and I'll make some dumplings. Ooh. Um, yeah. That's my contribution to actually <laughs> pretending to cook something rather than just putting it in. <laughs> like it. But it's um, yeah, it's it's real food. It's not processed. There you go. Then that's not pretending. That's like just that's just being organized and efficient. <laughs> I'm actually using my finger a little bit to blend. Sometimes that helps. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the fingerprint is very obvious and it doesn't look right. Okay, five more minutes, ladies. We'll be right back. Are you new to painting, um, Louise? Is it a, or are you sort of, you know, artist in your no. spare time? No, not at all. Not at all. I. The funny thing is, I used to paint 
I took painting classes for nine years, which I'm almost embarrassed to say now because it doesn't look like it. <laughs> but I did that when I was a child and then I stopped for many, many years and now I'm trying to pick it up again. So I did exactly the same. I painted at school and then finished when I was 15. And then I, I found Leah's class in lockdown um, yeah. at the age of 52. And uh, I'm like, I haven't done this for 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> But I love it. You're enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, I do. I love it. I just, it's like, oh, I don't want to work anymore. It isn't good. Are you taking any of the other classes? Yeah. Well, I started, um, the first one I signed up for was her, and it was a, like a guest teacher. So it was pastel landscapes. And I didn't know anything about pastels, never even, I didn't even have a set when I turned up for the first class. So I did my first class in it with a pencil. <laughs> And then, I, and but I I got the bug. Um, and then Leah on Saturday she was doing like a beginner's drawing class. Um, so I took that. So I just try and ram in as many as I can, basically. Yeah. 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 How about you? Are you is this the your first one, or do you do other ones as well? Uh, no, I I usually just join this one. So I'd love to join on weekends as well, but. I don't know, somehow it just hasn't happened yet. So I think I have to decide either to make it happen or, yeah. Yeah, you have to kind of schedule it in. Um, it was easy during lockdown because yeah. I wasn't doing anything else, right? So it became, it became a really good habit. Um, but um, yeah, now now real life has started again. It's like you have all these calls on your time. You know? yeah. I've got a 12-year-old daughter, so she oh. tends to want my attention at the weekends which is fair enough yeah. well, I have to do deals with her <laughs> but it's fun it is I like also it really it's really a nice way to switch off but you're still using your brain I think you know because it's it, it actually takes so much effort um but it's just you're using your brain in such a different way so I really enjoy that side of it I completely agree it's like meditation for me yeah you know and um, it's but it's like an active meditation rather than that kind of traditional view that everybody has it's just as you say a way of channeling your, your energy yeah in a different way Mia is so fast, isn't she, as well, when she's painting, yes. she makes it look so <laughs> easy. Exactly, yeah. No, but I also really like the way her paintings look. You know, I feel like I always get these very rigid uh, edges, sort of, whereas I think the... Um, her paintings are more lively there's something about the way they're painted that just I really try to aspire to that but it never really works out I know exactly what you mean it's um yeah there's a, there's just a sort of dynamic quality to them isn't there yeah exactly yeah. sometimes I think it's because she doesn't try too hard I think I try too hard mm. <laughs> I get in my own way it, t it probably takes a lot of time to get to the point where you don't have to <laughs> worry so much exactly just lock it on that's why I like the pastels in a way because they're very forgiving and you can kind of cover a lot of ground very fast mm. um as I said, they can be a little bit messy and not everybody likes that, but it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I haven't tried pastels yet, but I just, all I heard about it is that it's very messy, but I think it'd be nice to try. Yeah, I think the advantage of me not knowing anything about pastels when I joined the class was I didn't have any preconceptions or anything. I was just like, 
this is a this is a time that I can make on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn up and do something and see how I get along. True. Yeah. And then I got bitten by the bug. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts do you live in London? I'm um, I'm kind of east of London, so um, the Canary Wharf office is sort of east of London, and I'm even more east than that, so in Essex. Okay, heard of that. <laughs> and whereabouts are you? Are you um. In um, so in Poland, but up north in Gdansk. Okay. Have you been at Reuters as long? Uh, only for about a year now. So not okay. that long. Cool. You liking it? Yes, very much. <laughs> I really like the. Um, I think it's a great working culture. You know, especially as a reporter, there's many places where people. Well, there's a tendency to get quite competitive, I think. Um, but uh, so far, I feel like uh, everyone's very, very helpful and collaborative. And there's a really nice uh, working spirit in, in the office. So the Gdansk office is particularly great, I think. So the Gdansk office, did you say? Uh, sorry? I, I, did you say the Gdansk office? Um, yeah. I haven't been there actually. So, um, events, I haven't made it that far. <laughs> I think when they opened it, again, it was sort of because we were in Gdynia, I think, before we split with Elsa. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's all, it's all change. <laughs> 